One of the best parts of this show is that we get to talk to filmmakers at all levels, filmmakers that are seasoned veterans that have made independent films opening in theaters, filmmakers who've made their first feature films. It is rare that we get to talk to a short filmmaker who's at the beginning of their journey. And I want to welcome onto the Film Threat live cast. There's over 600 of you watching right now. Keep watching because part of my not-so-secret agenda with Film Threat is to give you access to filmmakers as a way to inspire you to make your own films. Let's talk to Derek Rosenfeld today about his movie, Pothole. And first of all, sir, I you got that Flash Gordon shirt. <laughs> Look at that shirt. is yes. awesome. Where did yes. you get that? Uh, I got it on the uh, Queen online store, actually. Queen? The Queen online store actually has a Flash Gordon t-shirt. I have not seen that. Might be, that might, is, might be sold out, though, now. It's that is cool. fresh. Uh, Derek, thank you for uh, being... First of all, uh, I didn't mean to like... I thought it was funny. You, you like showed up early in the show, and I'm like, wait, wait, wait. We'll get you at the end of the yeah. show. It's yeah. all good, man. It's all good. We're doing this by the seat of our pants, but I'm happy that you're here today. Awesome artwork in the background. Tell us about your short film, Pothole. Uh, well, I... Uh... The whole thing started probably 25 years ago, actually. I'm a little older than uh, I might look. Um, but uh, I was living for a brief time in Fargo, North Dakota. And I was there during the winter months, and it got so cold. And the, um, the you know, with the salting and the high winds and all that, the roads were basically destroyed. I mean, they didn't have potholes. They had, like, craters, basically, in their, in all the roads. And so while I was living out there, uh, my uncle, uh, who was living in New Jersey, called me up and he knew I was wanted to be a writer. And he asked me to write a story for my uh, cousin's second grade class. Um, she's 32 now to let you know how long ago it was. Um, but that kind of started, um, you know, these ideas I had for this uh, movie. Um, a couple of years after that, I started to... Uh, compile a short fiction book that I self-published and the pothole story in another form uh, was in that. And uh, I got a little sidetracked here and there. I was involved in uh, some other things, disciplines. And finally, uh, you know, I had, a, I was sitting on the script that I'd written for a very long time and just felt that, you know, it was now or never. Um, I was uh, fortunate enough that uh, my college, after a couple of years after I graduated, they were left a $100 million endowment and they created a theater program. And uh, so when it was time to decide to make the film, all I had to do was go back to my alma mater. I went to the theater program, talked to a few people, and very, very fortunately, I met uh, uh, Sam Simone, uh, who was an aspiring uh, actress there and about to graduate college. And she brought along Matt Augazzini. And, um, you know, little, you know, we, little things happen here and there, but finally uh, we uh, went out one night, uh, as Alan had mentioned in his review, uh, which I love, by the way. Oh, thanks. Um, well, it's pretty yeah, no, review. I love, the, I love the review. It's like, that's yeah. the reason I'm talking to you guys right now is because you're, you know, the most honest and uh, you love movies, so. Yeah, it wasn't exactly glowing, but uh, no, it's, no, 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 it doesn't have to be. No, it doesn't what's, have to be. What's the what's the story of the film? I mean, the story, the plot. Uh, well, basically, um, you have a young couple. They're stranded out in the middle of nowhere with a flat tire, um, two flat tires actually, uh, and um, uh, Betty, uh, who's played by Sam Simone, she's trying to uh fix the tire but she doesn't really know what she's doing uh and it's hinted in the beginning of the film that they hit a huge pothole and it actually flattened two of their tires um so in the middle of a smoke break uh they are approached by you know uh that which you know put them in that predicament and uh it turns out that it doesn't it, it speaks but doesn't really understand english very well um, there's a lot of, uh, F bombs and, um, <laughs> C words and, uh, you know, a few, few sexual situations and jokes here and there. And, uh, it wants, um, 
Betty and Clyde, the uh, male character, to teach it better English um, through actions and and some you know a few other few other ways that you know are explained uh, later in the film. Okay, well that sounds very fanciful. Let's go to we've got over five hundred people watching us live, so let's go to our chat comments and questions for you uh james jamie g voltaic blood who's a member says hello derek hello jamie uh, rmfx says it's about a they a them and a galaxy oh that was referencing our earlier conversation uh we were talking about Star yeah Trek i don't think Star i started Wars. that for him that's okay <laughs> retro nerd girl says i'm in fargo so i know <laughs> you gotta you gotta check out uh that's retro awesome. nerd retro nerd girls channel i didn't know you were Definitely. in fargo that's awesome Great uh, Hey, Derek, thanks for being here, says StuntBrat777 Smith. Thank you. Uh, Jerry Time says, Derek, uh, question for you. Derek, Trek or Wars, which is in worse condition? Uh, Star Wars by far. Um, well. Yeah, by yeah. far. Not even not even close. Yeah. And then <laughs> um, uh, Tony Bowers asks, who's a member, did he say the pothole talks? Yeah, watch the movie. My fr uh, my friend, my close friend, uh, Dave Rogers, uh, who has I felt was gifted with uh, uh, a great voice, kind of the gift of gab. He was uh, an easy choice for me to to ask him, and uh, all it cost me to get him to do it was uh, some pot, uh, some Brazilian <laughs> Brazilian barbecue, and about forty dollars. All and right. Well, let me let me ask you this. I I kind of mentioned the review, but I you know where are you in in your uh, filmmaking journey and then where does kind of potholes take is this your first or is it uh um you know or, or you know i think i meant i always tell filmmakers who do shorts you know you really want to take that short and focus on one thing one thing that's going to challenge you as a storyteller and what, what can you say about potholes well it's the first thing that i had ever well actually i um i self-published a, a short fiction book about 20 years ago and like i said pothole was a part of that uh, and, and not as a, as much of a creative form, uh, but it is the first film that I've done. Um, and, uh, as of right now, right now I'm actually working on a feature length screenplay rather than, uh, a short film or, or anything like that. Um, but it is the first thing I've ever done. And, and, um, you know, I, I think that, uh, because the tools of, of creativity have kind of been democratized, um, I've, I, you know, I watch the live action sh Oscar shorts every year. Um, they look like hundred million dollar production, some mm -hmm. of them. Um, so when I went out there, I really, I admit, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing. I, I didn't go to film school. I didn't, I was just a guy with a camera and a boom mic and was fortunate enough to have a couple friends help me. Um, and Matt and Sam were fantastic. Um, and, uh, you know, first night we went out there, uh, the uh, electric generator I had blew up and we had to come back the next night. It, it definitely, it was a, it's a small miracle that the film is even in kind of the form that it is. So we're kind of, you know, I feel very lucky to be talking to you guys and, and uh, talking to your uh, viewers. Uh, more comments and questions here. Davina Duckworth says, a talking demonic pothole is a good premise and then fletcher williams asks what software did you use did you go in-house or out of, out for color correction i used uh adobe um premiere mm -hmm. oh yeah that's right premiere elements that's right cool and then um what was the most frustrating thing in making this short says akanika um there were a few little hiccups here and there um shooting at night uh, which is the way I wanted to do it. That was hard. Um, obviously, the first like four minutes of the film, uh, under, I would kind of understand if people who uh, are coming to it for the first time, I kind of understand like, oh, this looks, you know, I, I can't watch the rest of it. But if you continue with the film, you could see what we shot on the first night. It, it gradually gets better over the course of the film. You could see where we shot the first night and then the second night starts to get a little, little bit better. Um, and I don't really think I had the greatest equipment uh, in the world. Again, it was, you know, I was just a guy, they call it like guerrilla filmmaking, I guess, you know, you just yeah. run out there and do it. And that was the result. Um, and, uh, you know, I know Alan had mentioned, uh, you know, a good chunk of the audio uh, happened um, when I came home. 
uh, we were missing uh, some uh, audio and I had to bring Matt and Sam back in uh, to uh, re-record it. And again, had to, uh, that's kind of why it looks like a karate movie uh, in some parts. <laughs> Let's uh, some more questions and comments here. Spidey Sensei seventy two says the potholes in uh, I think it was at West New York can rip a tire off your car. And then yeah. Popcorn Beard asks, how many dollars did your short film cost you? Everyone always likes to know what was your budget, if you don't mind revealing. Uh, about thirty five hundred dollars. That's that's relatively that's right around the right range. Yeah. You know, when I hear people spend fifty grand on a short, like why didn't you just make a feature? <laughs> so, and well, because they want an Oscar, that's why. Yeah, well, you know, you can do that. The nerd far away asks Hollywood route versus independent route. Which do you prefer, and why? Independent, you have more freedom, so I'll go independent. I I think that's a very good. When you're on a the Film Threat YouTube channel, where we mostly you know we talk about indie film along with like big Star Trek, Star Wars kind of stuff. I think indie is a good a good answer. And then uh, our last question here: One Punch Man Tolkien fan asks, "How do we watch this movie?" Uh, it's up on YouTube. That's how I would tell you to, to watch it. I mean, I I, I kind of you know as 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 Alan has seen it and knows, uh, it would be kind of hard for a film festival to actually show it because of of the graininess of the first few minutes. Um, so I would I would tell you to go on, on YouTube and uh, I'm not a huge uh, social media person, but I will probably uh, in the future make a website for it. Cool. Well, I will say this. Have you seen a movie called Skinamarink? Oh, I, I actually- don't think, I don't think you have anything to worry about. Yeah. <laughs> that movie just looks, yeah. Yeah, no, I actually, um, it's kind of interesting you brought that up. I, I watched it, um, the review, the, you guys did a show, uh, your review of it. I saw it that later that night um, when you did your review, and I agreed with everything you said about it, actually. I, it, it was probably something that should have been viewed at home. Yeah. Um, but I really appreciated how it was kind of like a virtual reality experience of a, a nightmare. Um, so I kind of would suggest people watch it and not it, it was there was purpose to its its uh, low quality yeah well let's uh by the way i did post the link to the the short in in the chat is it in the chat alan can you also put it in the in the description for this yeah. episode so people can check out pothole from filmmaker derek rosenfeld derek thank you so much for joining us on the show we appreciate it you have excellent taste in art and t-shirts and uh <laughs> Can't wait for everyone to check out your short. Uh, take care. Have a great have a great rest of your day in take Fargo. <laughs> <laughs> take it easy. Take care. Great Thanks, talking to you guys. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks Later. Great. Uh, that was great. Love talking to filmmakers. Who doesn't love it? Can't believe this. I can't believe this is uh, my job here. Let's